From Politico.com, why President Trump can't pardon Roger Stone. And I know you're going, Adam, Adam, why? why? You've been avoiding the palace intrigue, bullshit, drama, distraction stories so well since restarting Adam versus the man. Why this one? Well, it's not just because Roger Stone is a friend of mine. It's not just because I, I think he's someone who really is, is kind of a representative of a lot of people in the, in, the, in the conservative side of politics who should be coming our way. Because, you know, like there, there are people on the conservative side who should be coming our way because they're anti-authoritarian in spirit. And they're like, yeah, less government, the better. The less authority, as Roger Stone has said to me personally, I just don't like being told what to do. Well, guess what that applies to a lot. You know, you know the flip side, I would say, in, in this sense, uh, if you're a Democrat who is a Democrat or a liberal, because you're compassionate, you want people to be helped, you want to help people yourself, and you go, holy shit, this government thing, it's not, mm, no, this is, mm, 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 no, it's failing. You want to learn how to really help people, either through localization, through voluntary solutions, peaceful solutions. Hey, your home is here in the Libertarian Party. But also in this, so I, I'm, I am inclined to make the bigger points from this story as well. And, and that's the main reason I would bring you any story, but also because I want to illuminate that, that, that there's this inherent appeal for the libertarians that people should be coming our way and that Roger Stone represents one of those, but also because Roger Stone is my friend. And I do want to defend my friend. This is from Corey Brett Schneider, opinion piece at Politico. Speculation that President Donald Trump might pardon Roger Stone has reached a fever pitch after Stone's sentencing by a federal judge and the president's repeated hints that he thinks the verdict unfair. But unfortunately, the Constitution's framers imagined this nightmare scenario, a suspected criminal president pardoning a co-conspirator, and they put in the Constitution language to legally prohibit the pardon power in exactly this kind of case. <clears throat> One of the bigger points here is that constitutionalism is a losing argument for libertarianism. Now, I'm a constitutionalist in the truest sense of the word. I believe in constitutions. I believe that people coming together to form voluntary systems of authority or governance should have governing documents that outline the organization with a clear charter, with clear authority that stems from the consent of the governed, that it exercises only the power that those individuals have in the first place, that sets clear limits on that authority, which is why I am not a fan of the Constitution that is currently being used to justify this artificial, illegal government in the United States today that is a product of a counter-revolutionary coup. The current, revolu the current Constitution was ratified illegally under the Articles of Confederation, which were the lawful Constitution of the time. But more importantly, I, I tell you've heard me tell this story, Jim. When I was running for Congress as a Republican, as a constitutionalist, and I, I was really only in, in platform a constitutionalist, but it's it's not the way you go about waking people up by putting them to sleep on the fundamental issue of the authority of words on paper. It doesn't come from the words; it comes from the people, and it comes from the principles behind that. So I've always said with my campaign, we are appealing to the higher authority called the Declaration of Independence. Even in your silly status narrative, that's the higher authority. And it points to the principle that says we have a right and a duty to alter and abolish systems of government that no longer serve us. And it points out, it illuminates the fact that like Corey, like so many other apologists for statism, they cannot make arguments from principle. They have to make arguments from authority, from the rules. Well, this is what it says on the paper, and this is my interpretation. By the way, we see the same thing happening with the Libertarian Party right now, with the, the LNC meeting that went 10 hours this Saturday. People wearing down each other with procedural nonsense, appealing to the document that is supposed to make it easier for them to govern by principles, by the will of the people, that gives them a shorthand of what to do well, they don't know procedurally. Okay, fine. The principles behind any constitution must be what comes first. So when Corey argues 
here to the Constitution, I have to call bullshit, both in defense of the truth, in defense of constitutionalism, and in defense of my friend, Roger Stone. Both the plain meaning of the Constitution's text and the historical evidence show that once a president has been impeached, he or she loses the power to pardon anyone for criminal offenses connected to the Articles of Impeachment, and that even after the Senate's failure to convict the president, he or she does not regain this power. This is, first of all, on its face, a bullshit interpretation because under article 2 section 2 of the constitution the president is given the power to grant reprieves and pardons for offenses against the united states states except in cases of impeachment and cory trying to say well because this is related to the constitution or because i'm sorry because this is related to the impeachment and the constitution you get no this is not part of the case for impeach like this is just on on its face it's just such utter bullshit but i i cannot blame Corey in this case, because I myself, as Jim knows, when I was that Republican constitutionalist candidate, look, this government, it lies, and it cheats, and it steals, and it murders innocent people all over the world, and look at the Constitution, it doesn't even follow its own rules. Well, who gives a shit at that point? Who gives a shit about any of the words on paper? All used to manipulate. I mean, I could I could go through it. It, it, it. There's more to this story. There's more of these arguments. I mean, this thing goes on for pages. I'm not going to read it. It is true that Stone invested the Stone investigation concerned Russian involvement in the election, and that the House charges focused on the more recent Ukraine accusation. But the articles of impeachment, of impeachment focus on the accusation of abuse of power, and it is that general high crime and play in Ukraine and elsewhere that links the impeachment and Stone. They are linked. Ah, bullshit. Seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. Everything is linked. You want to go? Okay. No, this is clearly not part of the case for impeachment. Now he's trying to make the case. Well, the framers used the phrase cases of impeachment, not conviction. No, no. Hold on a second. There's a principle behind this. What 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 uh what he's saying here is that anything related to impeachment must therefore be beyond. The scope of the parting power of the president, which is to say that the House of Representatives, simply by voting for impeachment, that is to start a trial on a subject, could take away the president's impeachment power on anything as related to that case as the alleged charges against Stone having something to do with the Russian collusion are related to this charge about Ukraine. No. Nonsense. But I would hope, more importantly, that you see anybody using words on paper as justification for criminal activity should be immediately discredited in the conversation entirely. Roger Stone did nothing wrong. Did he lie? I don't particularly care when he's being accused of lying to... uh, Congress, hello, if anything is a good patriotic American, we have a duty to lie to Congress every chance we have to disempower them. Final paragraph here goes, if Trump's lawyers and advisors fail to stop him and the president moves ahead with a pardon for Stone, it is incumbent upon any judge asked to enforce that pardon to deny it on constitutional grounds. Well, first of all, judges aren't asked to enforce pardons. A pardon is just, hey, the, that's an executive branch action. It, does, it doesn't involve the judiciary unless someone sues to get Roger Stone put in prison. What kind of evil prick would even try that, let alone be able to get away with it, at least in our semblance of a justice system masquerading as a legal system? So, The final sentence here. Otherwise, the original purpose of the pardon power to show mercy to others will be turned on its head. Instead, the pardon power will be converted into a self-serving tool of an aspiring despot, precisely the danger Mason warned against. As if Corey Brett Schneider or any of those seeking to put Roger Stone in jail give a shit about any aspiring despots. No, this partisan nonsense 
is intended simply to replace a red despot with a blue despot. And to my friend Roger Stone, who I believe has been fooled into thinking that Donald Trump significantly represents a kinder, gentler despot than any from the blue team, my good friend, I hope that you are exonerated and vindicated in all of this because I know Roger Stone may have been wrong, but did nothing wrong. Thank <laughs> you.